All right, guys, daily market review for Monday. Today we had no news releases, so we trade as usual. We don't expect crazy large ranges. Yes, the daily profile could easily be anything except maybe London to London, because that only happens when we have really, really high impact news for London. So it does like 50 to 70 pips. Or when we have a bank holiday for the for the USD for the dollar, okay. So daily chart. Um, my expectation was not the following. What we are seeing right now, I was more leaning on the bearish side because um, it made more sense for me. I was starting to see some level of SMT, some breakdown. We had a reason to come back lower, deeper, in my opinion. None of this unfolded, and that's okay because trading is execution. I did take one execution on pound. It panned out beautifully. I collapsed it 1.8, and then the market ran the, the opposite side. Side. So on the daily, my expectation was maybe unjustified, and that's why I don't. I'm not a huge fan of Dixie because I saw Dixie closing a little bit past it in here. But we also have this big fat volume imbalance, and um, and I wasn't. Truly expecting previous days high, previous days high to be taken, but I wasn't really expecting previous days low needing to come back lower. It is what it is. On Euro instead, we had this daily BC which we never could close through. Okay, we, we were seeing London how we started flirting with the level, and then we, when we finally broke it, it was a low resistance to the upside. Dropping into the lower time frame, that is that's what I was seeing. We have a nice daily BC, uh, H1 BC in here. We do have the same thing in here. At the same time, that's a V-shaped one. Okay, there is a CB, there is a CBBC, CBBC. So technically, it doesn't need to come back all the way down there. On the upside, we had previous days high, which was intact clearly, and the H1 CB. Now, how we react to this H1 CB is pretty interesting and very important. Because if from up here we start failing, we come back lower into the H1 BC, we have a little bit of a bounce and then we start failing to this place higher, then these two lows and subsequently the small imbalance in here, those are good, good levels to play with. We also have the weekly open, which is of course untested because we have to wait for Monday's close. So that's something we can be looking for tomorrow should we have a rejection here. Now. Um, SMT wise, we have two. We have two levels of SMT. We have this one here and this one here. Now I'm going to show you how it doesn't matter which one has the SMT necessarily. And I'm going to show, well, yeah, I'm going to show also there is another SMT which in this consolidation can create some short term opportunities. So this high up here with this level up here, you can see it went lower, we can even take this high. So a little bit of SMT plays in here, showing relative strength, which one needs to go higher, which one needs to go lower, based on many other factors. So yeah, sorry, got distracted. I was watching ES right here, and no, I'm not regretting not being in this trade. Um, that's something for later. So. The SMT doesn't tell us which one to buy, which one to sell necessarily, because we can see in here that GBP went higher compared to Euro, yet Euro never took the low and GU never took and GU took the low. Okay, so that's based on relative strength, and SMT is only signaling us that, it, that there is something going on. It doesn't mean short that one, buy that one, and we can technically see that also here. Which one? went lower well nasdaq went the lowest yet nasdaq is the one that went the highest up here with yes and this run which didn't go as low as not taking it taking that level which is this level right here so let's drop down into the m15 and we can see in here remember that this is the daily pc high and we can see the interaction with price action we tap in here, we consolidate around it, we break lower, we come back in, bearish order block, we tap in, we come back lower, order block in here, which run this low, 
as in range low, leave it be tapped, and then we have this beautiful run up. And in here, we have this CB, which is completely filled in here, running this buy side liquidity. That's the SMT, and that's the breakdown lower. Let's analyze this one, and I completely skipped the London session, not because it didn't move, but because I decided not to trade it for a while until I understand how to better approach it, because it has been tough the past, uh, past few weeks. And you can see that also in here, the range in pips is not really that high, and it's not really direct, it doesn't have a direction, it's directionless. So let me enable the sessions in here too, and there we are. That's the SMT, that's the other SMT, beautiful. The moment we create this SMT, we need to build some level of context with stats as well. We have Euro only taking as in range low. Okay, fair enough, fantastic. We have GBP not taking the as in range high, nor the low. So, so far this level is fresh liquidity which has a very high, high chance of being hit. I haven't run the back test on GBP, but I've done that on Euro. And the as in range is taken to the high or the low, or both, 100% of the times. Okay, so it always happens. And that's somewhat logical to say, because for that not to happen, it means that the big move has to happen in Asia, and then London has to do nothing, and New York nothing, and London close nothing as well. So it doesn't really happen, okay? Doesn't mean go all in, it means that that's the cleanest framework we can ever have, because it happens pretty much all the time. This run here took the sell side, we go higher, we flirt with this imbalance, we come back lower, blah blah blah. Now, this one went all the way back higher. Um, it went into the CB and it started breaking lower. Now, what I want you to understand is that this going higher doesn't mean it's stronger. This had a reason to go higher, and it was the imbalance right here. This one had already played with this imbalance a bit, and we have this one, on, when, when it's right here, we have the CB coupled with a daily level. And in here, we don't we have the CB, but we don't have it with a, coupled with a level. So we tap into, we come back in, we feel the imbalance, auto block, we go higher. What's important for the trade right here is how we displace on the right side of the curve. And if I have to pick which one had better displacement, taking this one right here. I'd say that the better displacement still remains in GBP because we have the CB right here, okay, good. And then we have a CB right here, and the CB right here is pretty much similar because it's CB CB, but this one is printing a down close candle pretty much. This one is already rejecting a bit, so this is overall weaker. If that's very slim in terms of edge or something, vis something visual, no, something happened. Oh, I just received the alert that my stop loss would have been hit. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And just since we're talking about it, I skipped this trade. Being a buyer in here with a stop down here. And it would have it would have hit that beautifully. The alert went off. Hold. So this CB right here is not even formed on Euro, okay, in terms of displacement. See? CB right here. Where's the CB on Euro? absent or we might have to say oh it's this tiny right here no no this is so much better in terms of displacement because we create this up close candle and then we displace consecutively lower leaving this low right here this one doesn't really have that so at that point i'm blending what i'm blending the fact that we have the as in range high and low intact i'm blending the fact that we have the london high and low intact and i'm taking the trade based on that knowledge now, 1MT4 didn't even show the free value gap, but it's there. Get in. It starts chopping around. Um, my stop was very small. It was very small because we had low volatility. And it was easy to justify the stop because this right here is not truly an imbalance. We should be revisiting now that we have an up-close candle which fed into ECB. Okay, so this is a good auto block because it's an auto block that went into a premium PDA and then it, we left it. I tap there, go right here. My expectation originally was I wanted to see this level tapped, which is the H1BC, right here. 
But then, as soon as we realized that we took some le good, good, good level of sell side liquidity, and that as a bare minimum, a retracement was very likely, and any retracement would have put me one R down very quickly, I collapsed it for 1.8 R, and here's the trade. So, highlight of this trade is picking the right asset based on the displacement on the right side of the curve. I know it's a mouthful, that was my original my final target, I never got there, beautiful, I'm happy I've collapsed it. The idea was external to internal, in the sense that we took this level of external range liquidity and we were coming back lower. Sorry, what did I just say? Where is my anti 4 Yeah, external to internal, sorry. So it was based on the following, that we took external, because we have a rally up, we never take this high, we never take this high, but this is the high that we take and then we have the displacement from it, and that was the basis. So external in the sense of this high, okay? Going lower. Then, of course, that's the M15CB. We respect that beautifully on the other side. We come back here, we come back lower as in range high, could be taken also to the upside, it's not low probability, it's lesser probability that it happens in London, it's not as low probability in Asia, it's basically more likely that it takes both than, uh, than only one, taps in here, consequent encroachment of the BC, inside of this CB right here, taps it beautifully, goes higher, and then technically there is a very, very clean setup, which is this high, low, Sorry, low high lower, lower low, up candle right here, or swing high, two consecutive down close candles, the imbalance, that's a pretty good buy. And uh, it's okay to take this trade, and I completely missed it, because I was focused on ES, for the simple reason that now creating the New York to New York profile is very low probability. I know it happened on, uh, like the last time we traded. London to London was formed right here. It created both extremes, but in normal conditions and not NFP, we usually don't create New York to New York. So, betting on the fact that any setup, which is logical, could bring us above this high, and blending that we have an H1CB right here, of course, makes it worthwhile to take the trade. So, it's a pretty good guess. Alternatively, looking at the M15, we don't have different value gap, but if we are smart enough, we can see that this candle that wicked above this buy side liquidity and then came back in and then we delivered again, that's a candle that you want to be removing completely, and that's different value gap right there. I guess if we go into the M10, which is the middle ground between 5 and 10, we are seeing a nice for value gap, and that's exactly what uh, I'm seeing right, right here. So, Dropping now or going to Euro USD, if I were to take a long after I realized that London and the, the previous days I could have been taken, I would have opted for Euro because I was liking in terms of profiles here. It's uh, it could have created the easiest of profiles, which is London to London close. And uh, so the moment it did that and it started rallying higher. And we, it's pr pretty high probability now that this low is in place. We can take setups in here. But you don't have to have the stop loss down there necessarily. But yeah, you can take trades in here. But I didn't really see anything specific. If not for being fully honest, this, this for value gap right here was a good opportunity. I wanted more. I want the, I wanted these for value gap in here because it had the beautiful lineup with the H1 order block, the upper portion of the PC and whatnot. So I wanted to play here to here. It never allowed me because it never dropped enough. So pretty good day, pretty good day. It moved nicely, it didn't move a lot, but it moved nicely. And alternatively, well, that, that doesn't really count anymore. It's still viable because the H1 CB could be fully filled. And then we have this break low where come back comes back in BC right here. You can enter at the consequent encroachment looking for an expansion higher into here, but it's only eight to nine pips. It's doable, but it's not necessarily perfect. 
Now, now, now. These lows now are pretty scammy, so I'm really thinking you might make a sell model. Now, ES, daily chart. Or should I say US indices? Previous day size should be the target, in my opinion. We claim the daily PC range. This level, we will see that this low was used quite frequently in the, um, over, in the overnight session. And then we stopped, guess where? Consequent encroachment of the daily PC. Because we are in a range right here. So that's equilibrium of that range from equilibrium we can move away from. This is not to be traded, if you ask me, because I wouldn't really have the confidence to say, oh, th this is weaker overall, it's not moving as nicely, it's chopping a lot. Yes, and Nasdaq were much better. And Nasdaq has the previous DSI perfectly lining up with the consequent encroachment, so that could be, if I had to pick any out of these, probably Nasdaq is the best one to really see that level being, being on. H1, we can see how we respected that level beautifully, the same thing here on the Nasdaq, even though it's a little bit dirtier because it's more volatile. This one being more refined and doesn't move as much, is behaving a little bit more nicely. This level right here, it's an H4 BC, which we tapped in right here, right here, right here. So this the mode, everything is set in stage to go higher. Dropping into say the M15. Something extremely interesting is this new week opening gap or just Sunday gap. And I wanna go over it because it's cool, cool, cool. It's from the close to the open. That's how we mark it. And it's quite likely that we fully fill it. Now let's see what's going on in here. We have a market which, let me add the sessions, which in London consolidates as pretty much equal lows, goes, goes higher, taps into the buy side liquidity inside of the new week opening gap, and it breaks lower aggressively, taking this low right here in the PM trend, and then we have a slider setup. We have a slider setup because that's a BC. That's the bottom range of the daily PC. That's a viable long. Looking for, well, from here, we can already be looking for previous day's high. Because it's the next logical target. But before that, we have something else that we have to go through, which is the day, the new week opening gap right here. Okay? So this comes in with a closure up here of this level being 63.25. And it's closed right here at 8.45. All right, so we can see that in here we came back lower, we completely worked instead of this imbalance, we pop higher, we come back in, we tap the bottom, and we consolidate again, we expand, we try again, auto block right here, and it slowly gets there. This market then at the open becomes weak all of a sudden. I had a long down here, and um, I took a partial when it fully closed it in here, and then I got stopped out down here. So that was a good trade. Uh, but I was definitely expecting for previous days I and it never unfolded, it is what it is. We have this break lower right here, which where we take previous um the New York session low. We take that nicely and then we start consolidating. This right here to me is pure magic. I'm gonna be removing the sessions or before doing that. Now let's do it now. Let's talk about SMT first of all for the framework. We have Nasdaq dropping a lot, taking this low. This doesn't do that. This doesn't do that. Does that mean that ES is, um, that Dow is the strongest? Absolutely not. It doesn't mean that. It all depends on the displacement that we have on the right side of the curve. But in here, this is truly stunning for the simple reason that we have ABC. We have a BC from this candle down here, and then we have another one, a small way here. So we can blend them. Study how the moment we drop in, we take the sell side liquidity pool right here. We cannot go through this level, and we don't have a low resistance liquidity run to the upside until, until we break through that. The moment we have an M5 close through it, then it's all up close candles up to the next level, which would be this small consolidation in here. That would be the market maker buy model. So dropping into the M1 in here, and I guess we could be saying that we can remove everything from here, so it's clear. 
we have the sell side being taken. We have then a lot of choppiness right here. Why is the market chopping so much in here? That's again, the, the answer is the correlated assets I have to do something else. So all of this chop in here was caused by Dow dropping and really needing to reach for some level of sell side liquidity. So the moment we hit the sell side liquidity, study how all of during this drop, this is not really moving as much lower. It's just consolidating a bit left and right. That hits it. And when this one starts going higher, it helps all the others. I don't know if you saw it, but here's another cool thing. Inside of this consolidation, after taking some level of sell side liquidity, both for the Nasdaq and yes, we can see that we have this low and this one doesn't go lower and this one is going lower. So we have a level of SMT and from there, what do we do? Do we enter the trade immediately? You can do that, but the amount of false signal you will get, it's absolutely absurd. So I highly, highly discourage that. Because let's just say that see this high and this high, well, this went higher. So based on that, you take the short on the NASDAQ or you take the short on ES. Yeah, you have some profits, but then it quickly erodes because we have to build from the narrative first and then SMT as a confirmation. Anyway, we do the sequences as um, key PDA hit, SMT at the PDA or after the PDA, and then displacement. And in that displacement, which must have a fair value gap or at least some form of imbalance, ideally a fair value gap anyway, we wanna we might wanna be participating. So taking the trade instead of this PC, now that we have all of this recipe, again, I'll, I'll state it again. I'm sorry if I am being annoying saying it again, but it's a it's important. We build our premise based on the PDAs, okay? Swing high, swing lows, order blocks, breakers, whatever. After we reach for that and the price and the asset hits it, we then and only then look for SMT. SMT can happen at the level or after the level is hit. When after the SMT is there, we don't immediately jump in, we wait for the displacement. And after the displacement is fulfilled, then the imbalance created in that displacement is our trigger for an entry. So the market right here comes back in, taps it, and it goes all the way back higher up till this buy side liquidity pool, and that's the market maker buy model. Now, let me go and add the levels. When it's taking a trade right here a bit risky, it could be considered risky for the simple reason that we haven't gone through this level yet, okay? Which is the daily, the technically it's the M5 or M10, call it however, however, we have to go through that because it's a BC which might be acting as an inversion for value gap. But in here, all we are doing is just dealing some volume because it was inefficient in here. And then the moment we start having the clean break on the M1, this is not a clean break, we immediately come back in. This one right here, boom, okay. That's it. definitely cleaner than the others. We come back in again, we tap the low, the portion in here, and if I remove this, remember the gray line is the new week opening gap. We tap the low there, immediate rebalance, and from there we start really rallying. And a move like that of 10 handles on ES is pretty good because as a bare minimum with one contract, you're making 500 bucks. And if you say 500 bucks are not enough for a scalp, I don't know how to help you. To me, it's good. Goes higher, I said liquidity tapped, beautiful, and then you wait for previous day side. Previous day side never arrives, and taking a trade in here would result probably in a loss, even though the moment you get in here, the market should really run because we have a fusion play. We have a PC and a, and a swing low. So it's external and internal. If the market doesn't go immediately and it comes up and you see something like that, okay, allow it to come back in a little bit more, taps in here, and then you start seeing this candle coming back down, collapse it, scratch it. Doesn't matter if it's plus 0.10R, doesn't matter if it's plus minus 0.15 collapse it because the market is not really showing you what you want to see when we are this close to liquidity the market should be going 
Bonds, they had something cool, but I didn't even check them that much. Um, we triggered this level of external range liquidity. We came back in immediately for the opening gap right here. That, that was the cleanest thing. Um, and of course, we first completely filled the level, which is the weekly BC here. And from there, we started having the rejection then. Let's look at this together for setups. And uh, I'm not really seeing many. But again, how do we know which one is probably going to be the strongest to the upside? Well, analyzing the turn in here, there is no for value gap. Analyzing the turn in here, there is a one tick for value gap created at 830. Analyzing this one, we have a two ticks for value gap, which is definitely bigger than one, definitely bigger than no, no ticks to the upside. So from that alone, we can suspect already that this could be the strongest. And the strongest it is, because this one fills the gap, the others approach it, but we don't really get there. So, okay, that's th the best way really is to wait for the rotation on the right side of the curve, because after that unfolds, you have pretty nice, clean, low resistance liquidity runs, assuming there is nothing to rebalance. And I can tell you right now, taking the H1, we have nothing to rebalance till up here, okay? No for value gap, no for value gap, small volume imbalances, but these are meaningless because they are not volume imbalances created in a session. They are created in the middle of nothing, which is what? the Before the Frankfurt Open even. This CB got filled in right here. And then we have the beautiful run up. And yeah, there's nothing else to talk about if not for Euro against Australian dollar. That was pretty good for a play um, from external to internal. It's already marked in here. Previous day side tapped in. Well, context first. Daily has been selling off. Okay. Previous day side tapped in inside of this PC CB2. We break lower, and from there, what can we look in, can we look for is H1BC. Okay. Previous day side H1BC. Previous day low H1CB. External back to internal, and the only one is this one right here. And you might say, But wait, isn't this already filled? Remember, that's the 17 candle. Okay, it's a 17. We skip that because if I go to euro against the Australian dollar on forex.com, that's a different one. If I go to euro against on Oanda, I don't even see that, right? It's a little bit of a top. And if I go to euro against the Australian dollar on IC markets. I see a much bigger one, and last one is going to be Saxo, and I don't even see that being tested. So which one is the truth? Skip it completely. Um, I wish this scandal wasn't even existing on, uh, on uh, what's the name? I don't remember, um, on Forex and CFD. Let me try to do a test here. And this is an experiment. I'm creating my own currency. I'm creating E6 against the Australian dollar, which should be exactly like Euro Australian dollar. Let's see if it works. Yes, it worked. It's exactly the same. And I'm skipping that candle right there. K1618. Okay, I'm skipping it because futures uh, have a closure price. Okay, they, they close for roughly two hours. And that's going to give you a little bit of more truth of where Euro, well, where we, you could have gone. Previous day say up 10, breaks lower. Very, very good. And that's it for this video. Oh, well, the entry. Most forgot the entry. Let me go, though, on this one. The entry right here is literally the for value gap, trying to place a stop loss where you shouldn't really be hit. And uh, you can get a pretty nice decent R like that. Focusing on this for value gap within the H1, you tap at the institutional the flow entry level. And that's a nice 2R. Entry is a bit iffy. It's early, 1.30 New York. But again, that's a good example. Bye-bye, guys.